Okay, parents, I want to address a big issue that we're seeing all the time here now in little league and youth sports. Baseball has got a problem, it's injuries. And it's not just overuse like we hear all the time, and that is a huge problem, but it's also mechanics. When I go out there and I watch a little league practice and I see 20 kids out there throwing with their, with their buddies, having a great time, I'll see over half of them with poor mechanics. And the problem is they're gonna get older and they're gonna get stronger and the issue will be that all those poor patterning and poor arm throws are going to have an issue because of the strength that they're increasing is going to put more stress on the joints. And nobody's out there working on that. And that's why we want to bring pocket path to them and understand that adding a element of arm patterning is going to help take stress away from the arm and get them throwing more accurately and most importantly without injuries. Our way to address that arm issue is with pocket path and the sleeve that we'll use for our belts or shirts. And the way we do that is really simply, it's about creating a pattern and a muscle memory that they can't mess up. So when we put this pattern on, we start getting them to learn all the four points in our throwing motion. You're gonna to start to see a huge difference on the stress of their arm, decreasing the ability to be throwing accurately and being able to do that with higher velocity with less stress. So I'm gonna take us through a really cool demonstration of how we see an athlete come in with poor mechanics, take him up onto the screen and see how we've changed his arm path and how that's increased his ability to pitch, his stress is way down and he's throwing a lot more strikes. Let's go take a look at the television and I'm gonna show you all that goes into creating a pocket path, great arm action for your athlete. All right, we talked about how important the arm path is. It leads to good health, it leads to command. What we do here is I'd love to show you how we do an eval to point out some of the windows that are very easy to see. Once you've seen it once, you're gonna really be able to kind of analyze and watch a thrower at Little League practice or travel ball practice and identify the windows easily if he needs to start working on his arm path to help his timing, to improve his overall long-term health. So let's take a look. We're gonna dive in just like we talked about earlier and see how we look at a typical pitcher that came in. So this is a kid, Brett, who started with us a couple weeks ago. And we're gonna show how we do our first eval. So what we're gonna see in the beginning here is just him throwing and playing catch. So what I do is I wanna see, how does he throw without any instruction? What does he do every day when he's on his own at practice with his buddy or at practice or literally? You're gonna see real quickly and real speed, right? Here's his throwing up and around, up and around, throwing, playing catch with his dad here. Right, doesn't look much different, just looks like a normal game of catch until we start noticing some of the windows that we're gonna look at in a second. All right, so let's go back to that first one. There he is pitching. We're gonna, we're gonna go back in the beginning and I'm gonna break down the windows that you're gonna see very clearly on what to identify in a ball dominant throw that would lead to injuries down the road, especially as he gets older and starts to get a little stronger. Let's go right to this first throw. All right, so at real speed, it didn't look a whole lot different. Maybe even might have thrown that ball pretty accurately at this short distance, but I can already see and determine that we're gonna have some issues long-term because these habits early on are gonna to attribute to his patterning down when he's getting older and throwing for longer if we don't address this. So we're gonna go in slow motion here. I'm gonna make a little circle here for you guys just to look at the ball first as we start to go in slow motion. Now, this drop, this low drop that you see here, though he starts in the pocket, his front pocket, and he drops down before going up, all right? And then as his hand starts to turn, his body's trying to figure out how to adjust because the ball is really far below him. So he's gonna try to adjust the easiest way possible, which is bring the ball up, not the elbow. So you, now you can see the ball starting to beat the elbow into that top position. And the problem here is, is what we call a stuck position. And this elbow right there, and this armpit height right here becomes an issue. We don't want that ball to be above the elbow this early in the sequence because that means he's becoming ball dominant and he's getting it up there too soon. Why is this happening? Let's go back to the circle here and let's look at this glove side here, right? You can see a big sweep of the glove as he breaks, big sweep of the glove and the ball is matching that. So you can see as the glove starts to flip over, the ball is actually flipping over. And that's just because of a timing issue. We want to simplify this, and we'll get down to a little bit later when he starts to work on this uh, a few weeks later, how he addresses that. So let's get to this. Uh, let's move on. So we've seen the glove go really high. We've seen the ball go really low. They're kind of matching each other like a mirror. And then let's get to this 
picture of him now going from catch play to his next step in catch play, which is, oh, here's a better angle. You can kind of see that sweep. So there's that, that bottom angle, big drop. You can see the ball starting to turn. The fingers are, uh, are on the side of the ball. Again, going back to that ball right there, if we can see that, you can see the ball is turning. His fingers are on the side of it. The glove is, what we said earlier, really wild and to the side. All right, let's move it on. You know, and, and these athletes will get to the position eventually, but because of all this extra movement and time, it gets there later, the elbow hikes up, kind of see the head tilting, posture changes because of the timing issue with the arm, and then the throw is typically pretty poor off to the side, just like that was. All right, let's keep it going here. All right, different angle from further away, but you can really see the ball dominating the delivery. Very tough position to be in to make a good throw from here. And this is just early throws like we talked about. Uh, this is gonna be worse as he tries to throw harder and puts more intent into it. So we wanna fix these things before he gets to that point. And that's why we're addressing catch play early, early on in these, in these deliveries here. All right, one other thing to notice here is when we do get this big sweep of the glove and the ball, what you're gonna watch also is a collapse of the front leg, falling off to the side. You can see his kind of uh, odd follow through that goes to the side. And that is all correctable by getting a more efficient arm path, getting timing easier, and getting rid of extra movement from glove to ball. And we'll see that in a couple slides here in a second. Let's get inside and watch him from the mound now. So we talk about this constantly, how when you see an athlete have poor catch play, his habits that he's doing out in catch play are going to be the same habits he's gonna be trying to work on on the mound. The problem is, is pitching coaches are only gonna be able to see him once a week, maybe for 25 pitches. He's gonna have a ton of stuff to work on other than just mechanics, so there's not much time. So you're not gonna really work on all these things. You're just gonna focus on, can we get the ball from A to B? I don't care how you do it, as coaches would say. Where us, I wanna make sure that we're cleaning up all this extra movement. So, He's an extra movement guy in catch play, already saw that. He's an extra movement guy in the mound. Big, huge sweep, here comes the ball, here comes that big leg kick. We can see the same habit. Let's point that out down here and up here that we noticed earlier in those simple 60 foot throws. All right, as we go carry along, here's that big sweep. That's a tough position to get to. Now, shorter distances, 45 feet, you may not even ever think this kid has a problem. He might be your all-star. But as the distances increase, you're gonna definitely see that the issues are gonna be enhanced. Uh, when we see this big long arm sweep, we start to see breakdowns in the back landing leg, or the front landing leg, the back foot, and then the landing itself as it sort of sweeps across and he falls off to the glove side. Pretty common to see when guys have extra wide movement. So let's see what happens as we get into the pocket path. All right, so let's break this down. We got him in a high pocket position. I want you to pay attention now as we start to identify this window here and start to see the corrections that are being made. All right, so we got a pull here. He's not going down. And this is day one, so he's just put this on for the first time, so this is very new to him. But you can start to see he's starting to get less stuff going on, a short stroke, very short distance. Let's move on to the next slide as he goes into his throws. Now he's coming from a lower pocket position. So we can see the low pocket position being in more of an infield spot. We've started to address his glove too. So as we're working on getting his arm path to glide through the sleeve, right? Now you can see if he tried to go long like he did before, that sleeve would rip off or it would just give him feedback to not do that. So he's now creating a better arm stroke. The elbow's in a higher position now. Ball's below the elbow at this point, which is a good position to be in. That would be right in this spot here. So now we're seeing a, a much better position here. We see a glove position that's not wide up to the sky and sweeping across. I like that a lot. And as we're going forward, all right, he's starting to get a little better throwing habits. You can see his lower half now starting to uh, get better at bracing. So when he lands, he's not falling off to the side as much. There's the glove sweep. All right, let's see as he's starting to walk into the throw. Really starting to clean up now getting more extension now. So you can start to see that his finishes are different. Before you'd see a finish that was a little behind and he was kind of head going away from the release point. Look how just by simply cueing him and getting him into the sleeve here, day one, he is now starting to keep his head posture 
and this position, much stronger position to get an accurate throw, start to increase the velocity because his body's behind the ball. Really nice stuff here. Let's move on into this. And now remember, like I said, it wasn't hard to see once you start noticing the windows. It's a little bit of a tight spot of it, but nice clean throw. Head posture is definitely not off to the side anymore. It's starting to stay accurate. The throws are starting to clean up. All right, here's a great shot of now, three weeks, four weeks later, and now he's got much more balance. You see a lot of things happen when we got cleaner with the, the arm path first. His leg kicks cleaner. You notice right away that he's not sweeping his body up and around. He's coming out of that pocket position. Really good, strong position here. Definitely keeping the fingers on top of the ball. Much stronger here, right? There's that identified spot there. Elbow now is going to get in a nice position where it's about armpit height here before hips start to turn. Glove is nice and calm now, not as big as it was before. That's going to be helpful for him to repeat. And now hips are rotating, arm is laying back. Real nice, clean, easy delivery by Brett. Okay, thanks again for watching. We broke down a Little League athlete. Could be your athlete for sure, but once you go to games, you're going to start noticing all these different patterns of ball dominant throwing and how to correct it. It's going to make a huge difference, and we're going to make a big difference in his arm health, making sure he plays this game as long as he can, as healthy as he can, but at a high level. Okay, well, that was cool seeing the video, seeing the breakdown of our young pitcher, Brett, seeing how he changed from day one eval into being on the mound, throwing the ball with much more accuracy. So what I want to show you is sort of the process that went into getting him to learn those positions and to be able to do this really well. So let's take a look at these next video clips of watching him do the exercises. And after that, you're going to see tons more in the subscription videos that go into leg kicks, go into the grips, go into all the things, mentality that goes into pitching. It's all part of the whole subscription that you guys are getting with the youth kit. It's going to be awesome stuff for you guys to take a look at. Okay, let's check out Brett here in that one position. He's going into the sleeve and out. Just working on that field, that first movement, getting the fingers on top. Looks really good. Just want to repeat over and over again. On to mastering that two position. Watch how Brett gets up to the two and holds. He pauses just for a second. Really important to own this position right here. This is a very important position to allow the hips to time up. Again, repetition is key here. On to position three here. We're working on the hip now, but the key here as Brett turns his hip is to keep that arm relaxed and don't move from that two position. Also pivoting that back foot is really important to make the hip unlock. On to that final step, position four where we're adding the hips and the throw. Brett has that two position holding, turning his hips. His hips allow the arm to move forward into layback, emphasizing a good extension and release out in front. 